that was in Mexico, Ronaldinho came to play for, oh, for the season. Yeah, he played with Querétaro. I went in a couple minutes, like it was incredible. Yeah, that photo was from uh, the U18 national team, actually where I first met Amando. Uh, it was in, yeah, crazy, right? I didn't know that was still on my Instagram. <laughs> actually, we were both uh, wingers at that point too, yes. so a little competition between yeah. us, huh? <laughs> oh, that's actually crazy that that, um, that was the first time we met, I think, too, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. There we go. Okay, there it is. <laughs> I knew this one was definitely gonna come. I kept it, because you know what? Hey, I think I was 16 and uh, uh, 16, 17. Yeah. 17. This was before I went to preseason with uh, New York Red Bulls. I was like, you know what? I'm 17. I'm the young guy. I just signed. Like, I wanna, I wanna do something crazy. I want people to know me for, you know, for being kind of wacky. 17 years old. You hit the gym, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh man, all the time. I was in the gym all the time, man. Thanks for noticing, though. No, yeah, of course. <laughs> what happened to them? Yeah, uh, <laughs> the years. You know, years went by. <laughs> That you. That's me, bro. Really? <laughs> Who'd you think oh, it was? <laughs> I didn't. Well, I, I didn't know if the main guy was was you there. I thought you were maybe in the back over there. No, yeah. come on. <laughs> <laughs> we were playing against UCLA, who was ranked number three at the time. Actually, I wish there was a clip of that because scored a sweet left footed volley from outside the eighteen no to go up one zero. Like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was with Red Bull U fifteen sixteen, and that was the first time the Red Bull Academy had ever won like a tournament like that. You know. Right. But Arun was actually part of that 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 team uh, winning that championship. So, really special moment. One of the first trophies I won. Signing my first professional contract it was a pretty cool ceremony because the draft was happening in LA, and yeah. you know when you're signed from your own club, you don't get to take part in it. But uh, they made it really special for me and one other player that they signed both of us. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, that picture needs no explanation. You know? <laughs> that was at uh, preseason with uh, New York Red Bulls. Did you play with him at the same time? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, dude, like this was um, 2013. Dude, I had to take my, my moment. Oh my god. I mean, like now I have that forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. You yeah. still got his number? Nah. No. No. <laughs> of course not. Oh, geez. Oh, that's <laughs> the one, dude. What a picture, man. What a picture, huh? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah, I thought that was funny. So we were doing a, we were playing against Sunderland when I was at San Antonio. And like our, the club's nickname was for us was Los Gatos Blancos. And they were the Black Cats, both SAFC. Yeah. And they told us to wear all white coming into the stadium. And like a week before there was that all white party that kind of yeah, went yeah, viral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had our team photographer photoshop me into it, <laughs> pretending like I was there. Oh, those aren't your boys for real? Oh, That's man. Tom Brady, bro. I'm not, boy. <laughs> I'm not boys with those guys. It actually brings me a lot of joy looking at this picture, man. Man, it was a very special moment. Like my mom and dad were there and I had to get the picture, you know, with the jersey up. So yeah, very um, special moment in my career. That's where it all started. That brings me some fond memories too. That's where I scored my first pro goal. Really? Yeah. Wow. No. Red Bull Arena. Awesome, man. Good thing I wasn't there. Like, down, you know? <laughs> this was like a pregame ritual in Seattle where we did like a like a reaction test. You know, like when we do the warm up, the like call out. There's like a color cone on this side and this side, and everyone's in the middle and they call out a color. Yes. And you got to react and get yeah. there fast. The person that loses that has to train in the ball kid jersey oh, wow. for for the day before the game. That's hilarious, <laughs> dude. We gotta implement something like that here. I'd like to see some of the boys yeah, that in would pink. Be sick. <laughs> this is with uh, the cholos that they wanna. Um, I think it was like a Halloween thing that they were trying to like do because I think the game was on Halloween, so they were doing like a promotion and stuff. And obviously, like you know, they they had like the. So what's your character there? I don't. <laughs> I just put on. I think I just put on like a funny thing. Like uh, I they see didn't Batman, have too many. Thor, Pikachu. You got Paul. Is that Rakejo on the <laughs> left too? Yeah, that's actually John Rakejo. Yeah, it that's is. Paul yeah. Ariola, Paul yeah. Yeah. That's Matt Hummels playing against Dortmund. Uh, there was a friendly there. Probably one of the coolest experiences I've had is playing against some of the best players in the world, testing yourself against them. For when I was on the field, I felt like I was chasing shadows a little bit. Like you couldn't really get tied to them because they play so quick. Ooh, this is the first time going to Disneyland. That's my wife, Roxana. But I mean, rate the drip, dude. Some jorts, <laughs> you know, I had some, some Jordans on. Sure, uh, the nice. Adidas T, the yeah, like MLS sponsorship tea. there. Yeah, man, I was, I was vibing, dude. That's got to be one of my favorite pictures <laughs> of all time. That was uh, winning the MLS Cup in 2019. Got champagne poured all over my head. That's why I'm a little wet. <laughs> <laughs> Probably one of the best moments of my career is being a part of that run. Wow, the, where I it know all began. I still had that. 
that was I can't even remember like maybe U11, U10. Pretty much when I started playing soccer, like I'm from New Jersey, so you can see the big New Jersey like symbol right. on the chest. Right. That's pretty much one of the one of the moments when I you know started taking soccer more seriously. I remember that tournament because like. My dad was like, hey, you're one of the older guys, so like... Uh, How old do you think you were there? I was probably 10, 10 or 10? Yeah. What do we say about the sweatband? Maybe bring that back? I don't know, I, I maybe. A little vintage Amanda? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throwback, yeah. Treat yourself to everyday food and drink specials at the District Pub and Kitchen. With three convenient locations here in El Paso, you can catch them between 7 a.m. and 2 a.m. Now back to the podcast. Bayer Leverkusen already won the Bundesliga. Uh, will they lift the trouble? You watch a lot of... Uh, Bundesliga or no? Uh, maybe bits here and there. I kind of watch a lot of soccer overall. Yeah, same, same. Um, I mean, they're still trying to do the invincible season, right? Which if they do undefeated and a treble, that would probably have to be one of the best seasons of all time. You think I'm rooting for year? them. I don't know. I, I dude, they're, they, they keep getting these late goals to yeah, tie man, or to dude, win. Those, those are tough, bro. I'm rooting for them. I don't know if they're going to. They're going to hopefully, you know, Shabby Alonso, yeah. let's yeah, hope yeah, he yeah. can do that. But uh <laughs> I'm rooting for them. That's yeah, for that'd sure. Be sick. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. VAR, what are your thoughts on it and just game day technology in general? VAR, when it first came out, I thought like it would really help out. Dude, being a forward, you know, like those moments where it's like very indecisive. Right. Like, am I off? Am I not? Like you feel like, hey, that, that'll definitely help us and like be very sure because you're, you're rewatching it pretty much, you know? And over the years, like how it's kind of failed, you know? Mm. I think that's been, I don't know if that's like, I, I don't know what the reasoning behind it. Like it should be pretty much like 100% knowing if it was offsides or not, right. you know what I mean? Or, or a goal or not, whatever it is. I don't know, man. I, I have mixed feelings about it, you know, because if we had it in USL, I think it'd be a disaster, to be honest. I don't know how that would work. I don't know if it'd be better or not. I don't know if that's a hot take or not. You know, I don't, I don't know how know. you feel. Would you? I mean, I'm thinking back to our first game when you got called offside oh, dude, and you were onside. Yeah. Um, there's been a couple of those that got taken away that's that so true, that man. they've called offside when it's not. So as a forward, I'm like, put it in there. Yeah, yeah. So you so you stop wanna... calling me offside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's because dude, it's like you have to like play that line right. so close, and if you give too much space to the defender, oh, well, you know, like no. you'll catch up. You know, you have to be on the line. So. Right. I don't know, man. I have mixed feelings about it. It's so. true. I mean, the way it's been handled and interpreted, the rules has raised a lot of questions, but. Um, yeah. I don't know. I got my own little opinions on yeah, it based same, on, same especially answer. that first game of the year. <laughs> FC Juarez will host Frankfurt in July. How big is that for soccer in the region? And are you pulling up to the match? I will definitely be going to the game. Um, I think that's super cool. You get to see yeah. one of our local teams play against a powerhouse in Europe and test themselves. And I think it gives everyone here the experience of what the level is here compared to Europe. And I think that uh, it's just going to be a great spectacle for anyone that's in attendance, you know? Yeah, for sure, man. Treat yourself to everyday food and drink specials at the District Pub and Kitchen. With three convenient locations here in El Paso, you can catch them between 7 a.m. and 2 a.m. Now back to the podcast. Explain the emotions you felt going back to New Mexico and scoring a penalty. I mean, it was great for me, you know, like yeah. all the guys there. Uh, I mean, they have pretty much a new team, um, but pretty much like the staff, like the people working at the stadium and a good amount of guys that were there last year obviously know me, you know, so... It's not like it's not like I wanted to go and beat them, you know. I want to beat any team. Right. Uh, I just think going back there, I felt more like, man, I was I've been here like so long, you know. So in that sense, it was amazing. And even the fans, like at the beginning, they started like you know doing the little chant. They were booing me. Right. But every time I would go out, they I would like look over and they would be clapping for me, you know, like because sure. they're like I mean I got to give them a lot of respect to the fans like over there, man. Like they pull up like no matter what and they support the team and that's something that I think. A lot of teams need, uh, especially when you're not doing so well or even doing really well to, to build that momentum. But going back there, man, and scoring was fantastic. Like, I, I kind of knew I was going to score because it was my mom's birthday that day. Oh, so wow. I dedicated yeah. that goal for her. So, yeah, man, I think it was uh, even an even better, better feeling, you know, being able to score on my mom's birthday. Definitely. When you were with your old team, did you ever picture yourself playing for El Paso Locomotive? I don't know if I fully pictured it. I know that they're... You know, I always enjoyed coming here and playing. I yeah. really enjoyed the atmosphere. You know, it's always a rivalry. It's always a really intense, intense game for sure. Um, I think whatever, when I'm at a certain club, I never really tend to picture or imagine myself somewhere else. I yeah. want to really 
give my heart and soul to where I'm at in the moment. When I was there, that's probably what I did. And right now, that's what I'm hoping to do as well um, in these colors. So I'm definitely grateful to be here and just really enjoying it at the moment. Yeah. So how did you navigate playing for El Paso against your old team? Well, I mean, the, the rivalry was always there. You right. Know? I remember the first two years that um, that I went to New Mexico, the first year was COVID year, so we played El Paso a lot. And dude, the games were like intense, man. Like I always, dude, I always looked at the team like, like, hey, like this is like a standard for the for the league. Like I always held a lot of respect. Like the games are always, always intense. You yeah, know? definitely. So to me, I was like, hey, man, if I end up, I actually thought about it. Like, hey, if I end up ever going to another team in the West, like I think El Paso would be like a per, like perfect fit for me, you know? Right. Just like being kind of kind of close to, to Mexico, um, my wife being Mexican, you know? Like, right. I always felt like there was always something there. And when I got the opportunity to come here, you know, got that call from Brian. You know, I had to think about it. Obviously, I was in New Mexico for a while. But right. Like I was definitely favoring way more towards coming to El Paso than anywhere else, you know, so. No, for sure. I mean, even historically, El Paso has kind of played a certain way and yeah. have has driven the league in a certain way, been historically yeah. one of the better teams in the West as well. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, man. What surprised you the most about El Paso and the fans here? The city is the food is oh yeah insane course, really good yeah yeah there is so many good places to go to eat um i've definitely enjoyed as much as i have so far and i know there's plenty more to experience yeah. also it's so beautiful like surrounded by mountains you got i mean i just drove through scenic drive the other day and you just have such a great view of just all the lights the city yeah. up in the hills and yeah. the mountains and everything and then for the fans it's always been one of those places in this league that that drives a lot of support and players connect with their fan base in the community yeah. so well. My experience with them has been really good and I hope that I can continue to build a relationship with the fan base yeah. and hopefully we give them a lot to cheer for as well. I think so, man. I think we're going to turn this around. What did you know about me before becoming my teammate? We actually played together. So right. um, I always knew like you were a, like a great, well, at the time you were a winger. Right. You know, that's actually funny you brought that up. So when when I saw you in the league, like playing center forward, I was like, okay, that makes, you know, that makes more sense. Your size, like, right. very tricky on the ball, like going to score. Like I thought that was like a perfect fit, you know, but like you coming here has actually helped me a lot, you know, to like right. build and like have that relationship with you and like play. It's actually funny because like, I've always felt like I needed someone kind of like you and like your style uh, to compliment me, you know, like kind of, if I do something, like I'm always expecting, like, you know, if I have somebody else and, you know, for instance, you being a forward, like, going in and making your own kind of play it helps me out kind of move and try to get on the ball more you know right i think it's been good and i think we'll be able to click a lot more no for sure i mean i remember even when we first got here we were both like super psyched about it yeah, and we're man. like man like just just i feel the same way like the way like the partner i like yeah, to play with a, a lot it's hard to get is... some dude it's hard to get a relationship like that man. definitely especially like being new guys because what i mean that was pretty much the last time we played together was right like the national team we, right. we haven't really played with each that other. was what ten years ago. Yeah, man. Ten years ago. Jeez. So like, but no, I was definitely psyched to hear that you that you were coming on the team, man. I think you're a great player, and I think for us, like, we need someone like that, you know. And I mean, it's great to have you, you know, oh, together, you know, playing right. on the same team. And no, I've been dude, enjoying I just it as know well. we're gonna ball. I know we're gonna ball out, man. I know. I know. Do well. There's you know, a lot man? more to come for yeah, sure. Man. Now that we play together, what have you noticed about my playing style that you didn't before? I always thought, you know, you're a guy with a great end product, really good on the ball. You know, dynamic, quick, can get out of sticky situations, um, can do a lot for his team. But I think playing with you now, I've seen this like next level of a work rate on both sides of the ball that contributes so much more than just like all the offensive production you've always had in your career. Yeah, and I think that. that's the the biggest thing I've noticed is is how good of a teammate you are and how you, you really want to win and help in every single aspect of the game, you know? I appreciate you noticing that, man. Like, I think that was, to be honest, like, completely fair, like, something I learned when I was in New Mexico. So, we, yeah. when the first year I was there, we had um, Troy Lassane, who's actually with D.C. And when I first came, I just came from, like, Chicago Fire. I'm not going to lie. I had big ego. Like, just, like, the comments, you know, like, on the field weren't, like, helpful at all. Right. So, those first two years kind of really molded me. And, you know, I, I had to give credit where it's due. And Troy, like, really helped me out in that sense. And when I came here, I was like, dude. I don't like I tell you all the time I don't care if you score if I score right, right. as long as we get the win man I'll try to do whatever I can no 100% you, you know? and I think that's like I feel it in you too you know so that's why like apart from everything in terms of like a play style man like it's really good that I have someone that I know like hey 
if I need to like bust my butt going over there, I know you're going to cover for me. Man. Right. And we got a lot of guys, Eric, you know, Liam, like our whole back line, dude, like I think this last game in Tampa, like you said today in the meeting that we had, that you felt kind of like that, that dog in us, you know, right, that, and that was connection. actually really, really on like on the mark, man, because that was definitely one of the games where I'm like, okay, we just scored, like maybe we get scored on and which we ended up doing like unfortunately, but the way we came out again to try to close out the game, cause it wasn't easy playing there. That it wasn't human, easy. Human stadium, 120 man. minutes on Wednesday, Dude. go to Tampa and, and everyone was grinding for yeah. each other. And I thought that was, that was a, a mark for this yeah. team, yeah. you know, of what it takes to, to get results. Yeah, you know? Man. So, I mean, if either one of us can bring that, you know, extra, I think, I think we're the guys to do it. How has learning about me and my playing style benefited you on the pitch? Oh, dude, like I told you, like, so I think um, when I like drop and like do my own kind of thing right. and you just go and you just read off what I do, dude, that is the biggest help. Like it, it like for anything, you no, know, it works because for me I don't too, know where I you're like, at. You that's know what, what I, mean? I want to do is I want you to yeah, do I'll, your I'll, thing I'll, and I'll then I'm going to. Kind of like we saw in the video. So we right. had a, like a video today of like Tampa um, against Tampa and we were seeing some of the runs that we had. And, you know, that first movement, like when I went and then you went right. and then we, we, we kind of got on the same page. I wasn't even looking at you, but I know like if I turn around, you're making that run. And that's kind of crazy. You know I, I, I mean? felt like that as well. Like don't even have to think it's so natural. Yeah. Like what you naturally do naturally allows me to do what yeah, I'm yeah. best at as well. Dude, it's it's uh, been really yeah, good. Man. Before you and I were in the USL, we were playing in the MLS. Talk about your start in the league. I made my MLS debut in Seattle and sore subject, I guess, on the VAR was um, I got played in a ball behind, took a shot, rebounded. It was like the 80 something minute. Yeah. And then we scored and it was to go up one zero. And as I followed through on shooting the ball, I accidentally like, stepped on the goalkeeper. Oh, shoot. And they called it a goal, and then they called it back from VAR. No. Yeah, that was that was absurd. So that part, so you nah, hate it. <laughs> now I hate it. Yeah. So you hate it. Mixed VAR. emotions, right. Oh. But um, no, I, was my, I remember my debut. Um, it was in front of, I think, 60,000 fans in Seattle. Like, Dude, that's crazy. They had been on the road for so long. Yeah. I got signed to the team in, I think, end of May or beginning of June. And yeah, first game was a start. We did end up winning 1-0. Yeah. And, you know, it, it felt like a full circle moment having given, I'm sure like yourself, given so much to the sport. Everyone's careers, you have highs and lows and just continuing to believe in yourself and persevere and then ultimately get rewarded with opportunities like that was really yeah. special. So who were some of the biggest names you played with or against in the MLS? Well, obviously, dude, my uh, the team that I was on yeah, was stacked, man. Right. Like, ex Barcelona players, you know. Obviously, Tim Cahill being like an Australian legend, you know. Did you um, ever play against Beckham at that? Era? Well, I, that, so I'm trying to I'm trying to start when I first started because when I went to Chicago, obviously, like um, that was uh, like about five years ago. Bastian Swansager was on right. our team, you know, and obviously all the guys that were in the league at the time. I think uh, David Villa, uh, David Villa was still in the in the league. Right. Um, there was more when I went to Chicago than when I first ended up signing. And when I was in Mexico, Ronaldinho came to play uh, in Mexico for, oh, for a season. Yeah, Ronaldinho came to play against. Uh, he played with Querétaro, and I was actually going to play that game. I think the coach ended up changing the system, so I didn't end up starting, but. I got to see Ronaldinho. I went in a couple minutes. Like, it was incredible, you know. I think Jeez. that's pretty much all I can pretty much remember. Man, like, do you right think now. there was any uh, anyone that you learned a lot from? Dude, there was that a was guy. A um, do you know Dario Benedetto? He's mm -hmm. at Boca Juniors right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. He was at, uh, he was at, um, at Cholos when I was there. Okay. Like, kind of before he kind of, like, blew up. And just seeing the way, like, at any moment, like, he could just take a shot. Like, it like it kind of showed me that it doesn't matter where you are. If you see an opening and you kind of believe that it's there, dude, like the ball's going to go in, man. For instance, like the goal that I scored, um, you know, at home, like, like that uh, right. corner kick goal, you know, I ended up shooting it and I whiff, like, I don't know if you saw the video, but like the ball lands, I whiff it. And then I turn around bowlers there and I'm like, dude, I, I think I'm going to be able to get something or it's going to go in and, and on goal or something. And I just turn around and shoot. That's actually one of the like little things that, I learned from him, man. And that's actually really cool that you brought up. Because in terms of in terms of like shooting and stuff, I I would also say Thierry Henry, man. Like, dude, we would do shooting. He would bring me and Santi, because we were yeah. the younger guys. Tim K who would be there and 
dude, just blast us the ball, turn and shoot, turn and shoot. Well, obviously not Santi, but me, because I was the young guy and I would just play the ball back to him. Right. Um, so holding up the ball, like the first touch, because I had a really bad first touch, you know, I was more of a guy like it. If I took a touch and it went wherever, I was quick enough to get it. Like, right. Well, nobody would catch me. But that yeah. is really interesting seeing some of those those top top, especially strikers, yeah, and man, even their efficiency yeah. in the finishing drills. Yeah. Right. They're hitting like eight out of ten, <laughs> nine out of ten. Yeah, man. <laughs> those after after training like shooting sessions. Right. Man, those that's where you really learn, dude. That's right. where you really learn. I, I think of one player that I learned a lot from in uh it was in seattle was raul Ruiz diaz who yeah he's been a legend there i think he's their club top goal scorer at the moment but kind of similar to you is man this guy shoots from everywhere yeah. every opening he gets he'll shoot it he's such an interesting player too because he's he's also so intelligent and sneaky with his movement like uh, I, I i'm someone that moves a ton you yeah. know but I, I learned from him sometimes that sometimes the best movement as a forward is to not move at all. Yeah, dude. And then he finds yeah. a pocket with enough space. And, I mean, his end product is insane. Yeah. That guy was – he dude, didn't he miss in finishing. Goals, man. He, he scored dude. some insane goals. Yeah, yeah, I read him for sure. What were some hard lessons you had to learn during your time in the MLS? Just because you're there, you're not going to stay there maybe, and, and you have to continue to grind. I don't think that I ever let myself get too comfortable in any situation, but when, when you look back and you think about your career, and you, especially when you're a younger guy coming up, you get you have such finite opportunities and it's, it's what you do with them. And I think it's just giving yourself every chance to succeed in, in every opportunity you get because, I mean, I think it's translates to any moment in our career right they're short yeah. you want you want to make the most out of it so i think that's probably one of the the best le lessons i learned what about you Thanks. i would say doesn't matter uh like what's it what you feel like say for for instance like i look back at my um my time at chicago that was probably in terms of in my mind like the most fit i've ever been the most like focused i, I ever was right because that was like my opportunity again to go back like into the mls and really break through because when i left Tijuana, I came back to, to Red Bulls. I signed with the first team. And literally at the end of preseason, Jesse Marsh tell, says to me, like, look, we, we're getting a bunch of guys. Like, we want you to stay. We want you to grow with us. But we don't really see you playing too much this year. I'm like, and in my head, I'm like, dude, you know, I'm going to kill it with the set. Because at the time, you know, the second team would play in the USL. And they had, right. a good, yeah, had a good squad. So I was like, you know what? I'll play with them. And you'll see me grind and then go. And for me, it was like, it doesn't matter, like, how much that you put in there's just like there's sometimes like just this little extra that might be needed to actually like break in and it's hard to say um but it's the reality you know like a lot of times like you're grinding you're grinding and you're doing well because at the time i was the, the leading goal scorer for the second team and i never got an opportunity you know to play with uh, the red bull first team um so i ended up making a decision i got a call from my you know agent and going to 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 Chicago and I'm like I'm gonna prepare myself I did well last year I went you know preseason everything was good and pretty much the same thing happened man I was rostered like every game and the most I played was against New York FC like 20 minutes you know and like going back to your point is like you got to take full advantage of the opportunity because I played five minutes against Colorado um and no I played 10 minutes against Colorado and I had a 1v1 it wasn't super close but it was like a 1v1 against Tim Howard and if I would have scored that goal, maybe it would have been different. I ended up like hitting it. He saves it, you know. It was, right. It wasn't a bad shot. Maybe I could have done something else, but who knows, you know. Maybe that could have changed. Like, hey, I, I scored there. Um, but, yeah, just taking full advantage. Like, even if it goes good or bad, like, at any moment that can go, you know. And that's something. For that, sure. Kind of like you said, like, it doesn't really matter what you do. Like, sometimes, like, that can kind of go, you know. It's true. And I think you probably relate to it as well. <laughs> We're comp you're competing against the most expensive yeah. player on the team in our <laughs> yeah. position, you know. Yeah. They're paying seven, eight yeah, million they, dollars for that position, play, right? you know. Yeah. But so, it, it's uh, hard, man. But you, it was a great experience, man. And I'm sure right. you feel the same way. Right, hundred percent shapes you in a lot of different ways on the field and off the field. Yeah. So definitely would not trade that. Yeah. How has the USL provided you with opportunities to thrive? If I haven't done well in the USL, I, I don't think I would have called up with the national team, you know, yeah. for El Salvador. Right. Um, and that pretty much changed my whole perspective, like. Oh man, like I'm, I can do this, you know. Like I can, I could probably reach a next level. You know, who knows? You know, I'm never gonna say, it's. I'm never gonna get another opportunity to go to MLS. I mean, it's gonna be really hard. But like, if if the opportunity is there, I'd like to take it. If I hadn't have done well in the USL, like uh, I would have never got called up to the national team, you know, because that's where they saw me pretty much, you know. Right. So 
I give a lot of thanks. I think the league has definitely grown a lot. You know, these last five years that I was, that I've been here and the, the year that I was with um, Red Bulls, it's definitely grown a lot. And uh, I know a lot of people have kind of mixed feelings about the USL, but dude, like going and playing, you're like, you got to be able to grind, man. You got to be able to grind. And right. I think that's something that I respect a lot of like the players here that whatever the talent level is, like, dude, guys are going to work, you know? So I respect it a lot. What is one piece of advice from your early career days that you still carry with you? One thing that comes up to the top of my head is like, you got to believe in yourself because if you don't, no one's going to believe in you, you know? Um, that's something that I, when I was young, I always used to, used to tell myself was like, even like when I was like trying to make the national team, I remember telling myself at like 16 years old, I was like, all right, like you're at the age, like you want a career, like you got to make it happen. Yeah. And then I started believing myself, I'm like, I am good enough to be there. Yeah. I can do that. Like I should be there. And, and sure enough, got, got a couple call-ups with that where I met you. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think some more recent advice or not advice I'd say, but like recent lessons I've learned is just like how much more each individual can give to their own life and to their career. It's like, it's so mental, you know, like your body can say you're done, but and say you have one sprint and left, you do that sprint. And then you're like, <laughs> no, I do have one more actually. Yeah, then, and then you get three, four, five, and you build all this and you can see that you have this like mental barrier sometimes yeah. and you can really overcome it. And I think that's when yeah. you, when you find out who you truly are and who you're truly made of. Those are probably the best lessons I've learned. I mean, what about you? Do you have any? Yeah, for me, I would say, obviously the most recent is tearing my ACL. Oh, um, that's a big one, right? And I think that was just, uh, it, dude, I'm, I'm going to tell you too, like that changed me. So uh, the, the year that I ended up getting hurt, I went to the Gold Cup with the national team. Um, I ended up doing, like, we did pretty well. Like El Salvador kind of came back on the map, you know? Right. People were like, man, th these guys are good, you know? And they would see it was like a lot of like USL, maybe not like a couple of like MLS guys. And dude, I actually ended up getting like kind of looks from like uh, from some MLS teams, you know, right. and say, hey, like they saw you like, you know, like do well, you know, mm -hmm. um, finish out the season with New Mexico well and we'll see what happens. Came back, played a couple games and then um, we went to World Cup qualifiers. And then from there, kind of the same thing. We were doing well. We we beat, uh, who did we beat? We tied USA. We beat Panama. I think we tied Mexico. Um, wow, those are some dude. Big so results. like that was like insane for us, you know. Yeah. And I got to play like a, in a bunch of those games, so I was like, dude, like man, if I finish out the season with, that, uh, with New Mexico, let's see what happens, you know. First game back in San Diego, I tear my ACL, man. You know, like gosh. And that like qu it quickly like made me realize like, dude, like it doesn't matter like how well you're doing at any moment, like this can go, or how bad you're doing, like at any moment, like this situation we're in can go, you know. Mm -hmm. And I remember the whole time, like, I didn't complain, dude. I didn't complain, like, one bit about the situation I was in. I was like, you know what? I'm going to come back. I'm going to do everything. I did physical therapy six days a week. I would go to the physical therapy place, and they'd be like, hey, you only need to come, like, three times a week. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it's not your knee. It's my knee, you know? Yeah. I don't care if you just look at me and see, like, kind of what the deal is. And I think that, like, mindset of, like, just giving that extra, no matter what situation I'm in, really has helped me out. And I mean, I was blessed last year. To, that was the best season I had with New Mexico, you know? Scored a bunch of goals, had some assists. Like, we made it into playoffs. All we, after that Dude, all after injury. that. Injury, wow. Like, literally all after that, after that injury. And uh, when I went back to San Diego, I ended up scoring three goals there. So, two goals the first time and a goal again, you know, the second time. Do you so. think that going through that injury and, like, that mindset that you put yourself in of not complaining and kind of just controlling essentially what you can, like, I'm going to get in there yeah. six days a week, translated to – a similar mentality afterwards that helped you Dude, bring success. Yeah. Bro, honestly, I don't think I would have, I don't think I would have had the same mindset if I didn't have to go through that. Before. Right. I, I I don't know, like if I would have done as well. I mean, it's all like, what ifs, you know, I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I was blessed to get, you know, my ACL torn, but I think one, the biggest thing I learned was like, the reason why I'm kind of doing so well now, I like, I give actually thanks to my knee, you no. know, to that injury, to that situation pretty much, you know? I do believe you find out who you are in adversity. Exactly. And if you come out the other side of it, you're usually stronger, yeah. better, and more capable, you know? Yeah, and Yeah, I'm, I mean, I've been super blessed to, like, really not feel any pain, dude. Because I, I hear some guys, and they still get the knees yeah. swollen. No, I do as well. You feel nothing. I don't really feel anything. That's dude. awesome. And I try to do – I pretty much, like, the whole, like – um beginning stuff, like the warm-ups that I used to do right. uh, when I was first coming back, I still do. 
You yeah, know? I see you do like them just, every morning. Just, yeah, right. just just in just in case, you know, That's just good. in case. And honestly, like, yeah, it was a big like kind of life changing thing. Um, but I think I took it in a good way. So it's, I think helping me out, you know, so. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Big thank you to the district pub and kitchen. Catch us at Southwest University Park, May 17th against Memphis 901 FC. Secure your tickets at eplocomotivefc.com slash tickets.